your story kind of begins by focusing on one particular family in the Omaha area and then, and then sort of branches out from there. I, uh, talk a little bit about what the experience was for this family and how that ties in to what we have seen at a, at a larger level statewide and, and nationwide when it comes to these, these mental health issues that children are seeing. Sure. So I talked to the this woman that you referenced, Anna Wastel. She her son is six. His name is Elijah. He agreed to share his story because the family felt like it was important. Um, so Elijah started getting really anxious last fall, especially around bedtime. Um, he wanted to hide under the covers until it was dark. Um, he just was not himself. So his family got him connected with a group called Play Therapy Omaha, and they kind of worked through it. Um, Elijah did not connect his anxiety to starting kindergarten or to the pandemic, but what we know is that he is far from alone. Um, many, many Nebraska children and youth, adolescents, have seen an increase in anxiety, an increase in depression, and then even more serious mental health issues like increases in eating disorders, um, increase in number of suicide attempts from youth. So really in Nebraska, kind of as as we're working our way through the pandemic, one of the things we're realizing is that that kids were hit really hard with the things that we all lost, like their normal routine and their kind of the, their normal structure was gone. And, and that's been really hard for kids. And you're seeing it in the number of mental health issues reported. You mentioned him being a, a kindergarten age uh, child. And one thing that really kind of struck me as, as sort of an aha moment when you put in the article was that that's an age, uh, along with like fifth or sixth graders, depending on where you are, freshmen in high school, you know, those are, those are grade levels associated with a lot of anxiety anyway because it's such a big change. But now someone doesn't go to school, maybe in some cases for two years, and they have to go to a new school. That, that really seemed to affect kids in a big way, didn't it? Yeah, actually, as a parent and a step parent of a kid in one of those transition years, when I was doing the reporting, I was like, oh, of course, that's why it's been so hard for the kids and for the parents. So what I heard is the kids who were in those transition years, kindergarten, sixth or seventh grade, ninth grade, they they never got a normal year at their new school. So now that the um, the events are starting to come back, even if they were going to school, it was not a normal year. And um, th the school is having to kind of reteach kind of the, I almost want to call it soft skills, like how to be a middle school or how to be a high schooler because they didn't get that. And that's been really hard on the kids. They were in this new school, but the schools didn't, were not able to provide the kind of support that they had been in a normal year. You know, you, you talk a lot about schools, and I mean, they, they bear the brunt of this in a lot of ways, and we're starting to see school districts find solutions here and there. How much of a sense have you gotten in talking with, I believe you talked to Millard North in this school district and other districts, in, in how far we've come in finding solutions and how much farther we need to go for, for districts and staff and students to be ready to try to get back to some semblance of normalcy? Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's interesting that you say solutions. I hope that we don't have another pandemic. So right. we, there's like two things. There's lessons learned and then there's what do we do now, right? So we have some lessons learned around structure, but really, you know, everyone was kind of working on the fly. So now it's kind of picking up the pieces. So some of the things that schools have implemented include like um, partnerships with a, a mental health organization, whether it's Children's or Methodist or another one, so that kids can access those services right in school. It doesn't, for example, it's the way some schools do it, they can see a therapist at school. So it still goes through your insurance, but you can see the person and get connected. And just some of those barriers are out of the way. Um, more staff, staff that's kind of floating, um, you know, training teachers to recognize what behavioral issues might correlate with what kinds of stress. Um, you know, all of those things kind of come together. And what I heard from several people is that there are some silver linings and the silver lining is that there's been more focus on mental health. I mean, mental health was an issue even before the pandemic. Um, one other thing that I do wanna say is the, I talked to a Dr. Vance from Children's and I asked him about what parents should be doing because you know, parents want their kids to be mentally healthy, right? And he said, 
building resilience. Anything you can do to build resilience in your kids, modeling behavior, um, you know, showing them how to overcome even these really major obstacles, that's that that is how you help your kids through um, you get through this with maybe less of a mental health crisis than they would have otherwise. Absolutely, that's a great point, and, and there are a lot of great uh, tips uh, in the article as well. Uh, the article points to the Wastels taking uh, their, their child to play therapy Omaha and how that's really been helpful for him, and that is great news. Uh, unfortunately, there are millions of Nebraskans for whom a place like play therapy isn't an option. They just don't have the access to it. How much of a sense do we have? We, we, we have identified mental health as a major issue. How much of a sense do we have of this becoming uh, something that we can find solutions to in the rural parts of Nebraska and, and help folks for whom access is a, is a major issue right now? Yeah, I, I, this really ties into the rural health care crisis that I think we all know about. You know, there are not enough providers in rural Nebraska or rural areas around the country, and that's true of mental health care and pediatric mental health care. Um, so yes, one solution for rural Nebraskans is literally just ha having access to it. Um, one good thing that did come from the pandemic is that more and more things are being offered online. So if you do have a good internet connection, you know, you can connect with a counselor. It may not be the same doing play therapy, but th there are more options. But the, the solution there is ultimately we need, we need more healthcare providers and mental health care providers in, in rural Nebraska. Absolutely. I, it, it's a fantastic article on Flatwater Free Press. It, it contains a lot of really eye-opening statistics, has tips for parents who, who might be going through this as well. Uh, it, it is by no means going to be the final word on this type of thing, but it's a really, really important article. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, we have a link to it at our website as well. Uh, Roseanne Mooring, thank you so much for joining us and, uh, and shedding some light on this issue today. Thank you so much.